Hi and welcome to phase 6 on how to fit an A3D V6 hot end to a DaVinci 1.0 3D printer. So far we've assembled the hot end, we've stripped the printer out, we've put the 12 volt cable in, we've fitted the hot end to the carriage, we've had to do some modifications to the carriage, and we're now ready to put this thing back together. So this is not going to take very long, it's basically a reversal, you may have already worked this out, it's a reversal of taking the carriage out. So we'll just switch to the other footage and let's get started. Okay, so what you need to do before we put it back in is recover the circuit board from the other extruder and I just tie wrapped it through the two holes around the top of the clip, you can kind of see there and I've cut the wires a bit shorter. Now I've tidied up the thermistor cable and plugged it in where the thermistor was plugged in on the original board. So we just slide it back onto the bars. So here we go. We need to remember that the words on the stepper motor face the door, so don't, don't put it in the wrong way around. And um, we'll just move that carriage up the, out the way and line it up with the bars and, and try and slide it on. It's uh, it, it's a little tricky to, to try and start it off and until you get all of the, um, the the sliders on it, it doesn't kind of slide very well. So it is a little fiddly. You need, again, three arms to do this. So, you know, just, just give, it a, give it a bit of a shake and eventually it slides on. There we go. We've got it. Just make sure it's all clear inside. And that's it. It's uh, back on the bars and we can tidy the, uh, tidy the wiring up in a bit. What we can do now is lift it up and then locate the bars in what I'm going to call the end carrier and you can slide it all on and then you can't quite see but I'm pointing at the um, at the bushes the brass bushes and if you line them up with the carrier you can slide it all on at the same time so with a bit of luck it'll all just push back together and and that should that should that should do it that should that there you go next we need to put the belt back on the carriage so we need to make sure that we're sliding into the right place. Um, it is a bit fiddly, this. Um, you know, just just persevere. The belt does kind of slide around. You know, it's, it's, it's not easy. The hook is kind of like an up and over type of thing. So you've got to try and maybe bend it first. But there we go. There we go. It's in. And then you get the little metal clamp. And it's best, what I found was here, because my huge hands blocked the shot, just to rest the clamp on your thumb, and then when you get it in place, just push it push, push it on your finger, and that's it in. And then you take your T10, Torx head, and your screw, and you literally just tighten it up. This step may take a little while, but if you cross-thread it, just, just back it off, let it click, find its threads, and just screw it back in again. Or, or do what I do, and just brute force over ignorance, and go for it and screw it in but uh, it does eventually screw in w when when I get round to screwing it in it's probably better if you use a screwdriver handle now we need to loop the belt around the stepper motor now the pulley on the stepper motor has kind of like a, a pin coming out so you have to press the button that we used in the other video to take the take the slack and then you have to kind of use something to thread it round and once you've done that you just release the button and it's sorted and you can move it backwards and forwards just to check to make sure it's all running right but that's it it's fine now if you remember i said i was going to change these two screws at the end that goes into the bars for socket cap heads so i've got socket cap heads that i'm putting in here now with a, a small allen key and um, pick them up off ebay and they went straight in. So even though they were T10 Torx coming out, they are definitely M3 screws. And putting the socket cap heads back in was so much easier. And then that self-tapper has to go back in to tighten the tensioner. Now, this is a little bit fiddly because as you can see, I'm using the biggest screwdriver in the world. So I have to slide the thing forwards uh, and try and line all this up. It's a bit fiddly and, you know... It's not the easiest thing to try and use a huge screwdriver to do this. So if you've got a smaller one, I would definitely recommend that. As you can see, I've tried, I've got to go inside and try and screw it in. And there you go. Once it's tight, that's it. All done. And don't forget, the uh, Y-Courage tensioning screws we 
we drop the uh, the tension so just quickly unscrew them let the spring do its thing and then tighten them up again finally we need to put this side on so as with the other side there are tabs on the bottom which locate into holes give it a shake make sure this door is located at this point because if you don't it won't fit and then you just give it a tap there you go so there you go there's your e3d v6 hot end fitted to your carriage and it's now reinstalled in your printer wasn't too bad to do just a couple of things to check make sure the measurements are right make sure the belts are running in the same place so stay tuned for the next phase when we're going to wire this up and we'll fire it up please like comment and subscribe as usual i've been steve thanks for listening